are recording, I believe. Yes, eight seconds in. Okay. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, it's GeoDroid John here, and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial, as you can see on my screen, of how to orient and set up a part that you're trying to do for cosplay. I've seen a lot more cosplay stuff lately, and if you follow my Instagram, which is print from SD 3D, you actually see a lot of what I've been doing lately. I have a whole story and highlight reel about my whole Iron Man Mark 42 build. As you can see, I have in the background all the pieces that I've started building. And a question that is asked of all the cosplayers that do 3D printing, how do you orient and set up your prints? And Frankly Built just had a live stream today that I tuned into. And some some people were asking, how do you set up parts? So I'm going to show you. This is uh, the end result of what I do to make sure I get a good part for the uh, faceplate, which is this piece right here. This bad boy right there. Looks great. Uh, so... Let's talk about how to set it up. I'm gonna go ahead and actually start a new workspace. And this is for Simplify 3D, but you can figure out how to do similar things in your own workspace. So first thing you wanna do is whatever program you're using, you're gonna import the file. And Simplify 3D, uh, uh, in uh, with DO3D, they come as this file right here. So I have multiple Iron Man suits here. This is the full suit, and I separated it and categorized it a little bit better so that I can track a little bit more. So let's go to helmet, and you'll see that uh, the helmet comes in as, let's see, I have it all cut up and stuff like there, but uh, Simplify 3D does faceplate, helmet back cover, whole file, lens left and lens right. So they're getting more categorized and makes it a little bit easier to print. So let's see what a whole file looks like, and I'll show you how to separate things. So a lot of times when you get a file, it's going to come in looking like this. It's a whole item. So you can't really click on it. It's an entire thing. You're not going to print this like that. All right. If you want to scale it down to make it a, a figurine, you could do that. But for Simplify 3D, you're going to go ahead and click Separate Connected Surfaces, also known as meshes. And now you're going to have a bunch of different files as you click through. Each piece can be individually merged and combined. But we're only going to be doing the faceplate, so let's select the helmet and delete the helmet. And it only deletes it from this current workspace. We're going to delete the back. And we don't want the eyes. Those are going to be built in. And go ahead and remove, I'll go ahead and remove these because you can print these out and you put your own LEDs in. So this is what we're looking at. Excuse me. As our final product, you can see here, it doesn't have a lower lip. It's actually part of the jawline of the actual helmet. So go ahead and get rid of that too, if you want. You can break this down even further. I like to keep things as much intact as possible so that uh, when I print it, it all kind of fits together like it would naturally do. So now you end up with two pieces here, but uh, for Simplify 3D at least, you don't want to manipulate these any further. And we're gonna control G these, which is group. You can also see uh, where is it at? Uh, group selection. Control G and Control Shift G unselects them. So now it's vertical for the most part. You can see it's kind of horizontal or you know vertical there. So we're going to center and arrange that, and it's going to drop it to the center of the print surface in the middle. Now what I've learned is that you don't want a lot of support material on the front face on the front face at all, and you want to orient all your prints so that they one they have a lot a very good detail when you actually print them out so it's easy to sand even if you don't want to paint it you have a nice display so it you want your lines as vertical as possible and it gives you that nice appearance that's where the refinement comes from if you print it laying down it's going to have a bunch of scaling on it and I'll give you an example of that so I'll center and arrange this and I'll just print it as is let me add a manufacturing process which I'm using a 0.5 nozzle, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you prepare to print that, and that should just take a second, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so this is just an example, real rough hack, and you can see that there are scales that lean all the way up to it, and you're gonna see more and more visible lines as you go up. That's not what we want. So let's reset this, we'll center and arrange it, Reset the rotation, center and arrange again. We want this printed as vertically as possible. And I've actually learned that uh, if you can avoid having any overhangs on the front side of the, you know, the business side of it, the better. 
but then you have to deal with these scoops on the back. So anything with a bowl shape has been very difficult. So let's see what automatic supports would look like. I got this set to 47 because my machine's pretty decent at overhangs. I don't need to do 45. So let's do generate automatic supports. And this is going to drop all of our supports straight down to the print surface. Okay. And if you were to stop here, you'd probably be fine. You'd probably be just fine. But something I'm actually noticing here is that you can see that it's interfering with this and there's other problems here. So it's like, hey, what's going on with that? So this is something else you need to keep in mind is that in Simplify 3D at least, when you have a group, it's only applying it to each piece at a time. You can see the support there is only for that and the support for this one is only for that part. We want these to be combined. So if you have to, you have to export the model as an STL. Select the whole thing. Export as an STL. Save it as the uh, whatever, the faceplate. We'll say faceplate 2 just for I don't copy over. And then re-import as an entire file. And we'll remove that first one. It's in exactly the same orientation the last one was. Now see how this changes. We're going to generate automatic supports and it's completely different profile. So this is mostly good. What I don't like is supports that go all the way down to the ground and that have to also go all this way for very thin layer. So we're going to try some tricks here. And this is what you tuned in for is these secret tricks. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some support structures. Remove everything that looks too much of a pain in the ass to print. Anything that's going to take forever is going to add a lot of time to the print. Actually, let's go back and show a comparison. So this would take, with my current settings, just a few more seconds for that to process. Seven hours, 12 minutes, and 112 grams of filament. Oh, but we see I got a process here. So let's back out. I've been messing with variable processes. We're going to go ahead and change this. Make sure my layer oh, is set at 0, 2. I'm going to change that. Okay, let's try that again. So it was only printing half the helmet face. Da, 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 da. There we go. Six hours and 160 grams of material. So you can see that it has very thin supports all the way up. And, you know, that can be a waste of time. If there is only a way we can get that to, you know, be a different way. And you see some of the eye supports don't have perfect things. Something to remember is that um, the eyes you want nice clean supports on because that's the part a lot of people are going to be looking at. So we'll back out and we'll take some look at what we can do here to fix this up. So like I was trying to do before, I want to remove ex existing support structures that I do not want. And I don't know if this is only for Simplify 3D, but I know there's other support materials and different air, um, slicers. I just don't like having it all the way down there. Da, 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 da. Remove all the support material you don't need. Okay, but hey, how are we gonna get that? Obviously, if the computer's saying it needs to be supported there, we want support there, right? Yes, we do. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick that I use to get this done. I saw this in another YouTube video and we're going to hack it to show you how to do it yourself. So the part we want to support is way up here. It's kind of leaning forward. That's why I was on the front face of the mask. So what we can do is actually rotate it forward, actually backward, there we go. We're gonna rotate it backwards. Let's say, let's start at 10 degrees. We're gonna to try to do custom supports again. And now you can see the supports are actually at a different angle than their brothers there. So if you want supports, let's say right on that eyebrow right there, okay, you can go ahead and place it and it will, it will print at an angle, the 10 degree angle that you just selected and it will look really good. Something I recommend is that you don't s just slop in a bunch of support material. You allow it to create a little bridge. So you want a gap, kind of like a, a four or five millimeter gap between the prints, just so it's easier to tear out. As you can see here, it's a little rough around the edges of the eyes. And so that's a lesson I learned on this last mask. So we're gonna go ahead and start at the bottom and work our way up. 
leaving just a gap there so that it can actually bridge itself. And you really want the eyes to come out really good. So that's a better way of doing that. I'll go ahead and cut here and I will finish the eyes and move on to the next section. Cut. Okay, cut back in, and we're back. So I've done the eyes a little bit, and you can see that nothing really poked through the back. And so let's take a look at that. It is at angle, but now we need to reset it. It's tilting back, and you want to hit zero here and rotate it back. But be careful. You always want to center and arrange after every time you make a move because it doesn't automatically do that for you. So let's see how that would look when you actually go to print it. Ignore all those messages there, and I'll cut down the time it takes to process it, so you guys just go straight to it. That'll be done in the editing studio. So now, instead of having supports that go all the way down, causing all this pressure, you can see I already cut some filament off of it. I don't remember what it was before, but I've already cut some time off. And you're concerned about, the first question I had about this when I posted on Reddit was, can it be printed at that angle? Yes, it can. I've had uh, angles printed up to, I don't know, 40 degrees on the face of some items. So one way you make sure that your material actually sticks is to figure out your breakaway, your uh, support uh, separation. What I have here for the 0.3 layers I use on a 0.5 nozzle is one layer. So I wish there was a way to change this to total distance like Cura, but for the layer height I'm using, which is 0.3, one layer works great for me. And I use some little test prints to measure that. I did one layer, two layers, and three layers. And one layer works great. It breaks off with just enough support. Horizontal distance is how far away from a less than vertical uh, horizontal edge it would be and how far away from the support material, uh, the actual wall it would be printing. So I found this to be a little bit less than a quarter of an inch is great. It gives you the least amount of sagging. Uh, it's up to you and your indiv individual printer. So I know that works. So now we have some really cool angled prints there. So let's go ahead and look at the back. And we know that these areas need to be supported too. And something you can do to make sure that you support every area is when you go to prepare to print and you slice that model, you want to review this. The more time you spend editing this and getting this right, the better your prints will come out, the less time you'll have to reprint things or worry about quality. So what we're looking at, as we look through the layers, we're looking for little areas that are unsupported, that cannot handle uh, being unsupported. And we're looking for the, the bridges to hold those things up. You can see right there that that would probably be okay. A small gap is fine. It will print on, it will, it will cover it. You're bridging, bridging is good. So we'll look at this, and now we're looking for any other outshoots that would need support. Let's move this up. Da, da 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 and that looks fine up there we're looking for something that would be weird unsupported it doesn't look like anything crazy here but just to be sure let's add some support material what i'm looking for is any of those extra layers to be sticking out from the bottom i f i feel that these would be okay but i don't want to risk it right you never want to give it too much of a risk so let's play around with some more angled supports. So let's reset our view. We're gonna look at the back. And now let's rotate on the Y axis, which is this axis right here. It's gonna rotate the ground to the center. And let's do, um, you know, if we went to go play support materials right now, they'd go all the way down to the ground and that'd be a waste of time. But if we rotate 
let's do 10 degrees. It would now be on the side there, but hey, there's a nice little edge right here and right here, or maybe even the eyes that I could use. Let's go to 15 degrees and we wanna support this right there. Let's go ahead and increase the size of this to about 4.5 and add new support structures. And what I like to do is work at the base of an unsupported overhang that I would want to print on. And I work my way up like I'm painting. Work your way up, work your way up, work your way up, work your way up, and then down. And then that way you can feel confident. You can see it's getting right to the edge of the corner there that you have it, okay? So now you have like a little support bracket right there. right that little l shape that kind of supports all your material so let's see what that looks like let's reset this to zero center and arrange and now we have angled supports almost tree-like supports and simplify 3d let's see how that looks we'll do a cut And we're back. So this is what it looks like. We're at back up to 161 because we added more support material. But we're at six hours, 42 minutes. And you can see that it creates a pretty decent, over, I mean, that's not a huge overhang. Support material can actually do uh, steps just like any other part. So let's look at what we got here. We're looking for unsupported areas, areas that need a little bit more support. And you can see right as it reaches that level, it gets a little bit of support, which is all we're looking for here. Okay. And now this side finally comes into contact and that side comes into contact. And ultimately the tip right there is completely supported on all sides. So that's pretty cool. That's one way you can do it. Okay. So I wouldn't, I would do the other ones exactly the same way. And let's talk about these like little features on the front. Okay. Because the details on the front of any object are going to be really, really important. Let's go ahead and remove existing supports just so we have a blank canvas. So now you understand the, the trick to, in Simplify 3D and possibly Kira on how to do custom supports if your uh, slicer allows it. So we're going to back this up. We're going to back it, back, back it up. Let's do another 10 degrees and we'll see what that looks like. Now what I've learned is that the longer these supports are, uh, the better quality you're going to get. Otherwise, you just end up with like a little piece of filament right across the bridge and it doesn't really support it at all. We, what we want to do is prevent sagging on the bottom side. So 10%, 10 degrees might not be long enough. So let's back it up to 15. So what we really want to do is support the underside. And just like we were doing before, you want to do a bridge. So a little block here, move it up till it supports, a little block here, and then move it up till it supports. And like I said, the more time you spend doing this, the better it looks, the easier it will be to remove your support material, and the less time you have to spend printing. And you'll just learn these little habits over time. And right there, and I think we're gonna be good right there. So we're done, we're gonna reset, center, and now we have really good supports that will attach because I've actually done it on this helmet again go to my instagram and you'll see my my uh, right off the print bed what my parts look like so you can spend i don't know at least 20 minutes customizing all the support material and last tip here for this video uh anytime you're printing something that has minimal contact with the bottom of the print surface i like to add not just a ra uh, raft rafts are very important but i'm going to move this up to 4.5 maybe in five I'm gonna add a new support structure. I'm gonna look at the bottom of the print. And I'm gonna cover the bottom of the print with that big fat support material all the way around. And it's very important you do this once it's already centered and arranged or dropped or laid flat, however your slicer calls it, because it's never enough support material on the bottom. It's very important that it has a good base to start off on. I've printed parts that no part of the actual final product was touching the deck or the plate surface and it comes out great, okay? But it's, you've got to spend the time doing it. Now you can absolutely stop right here and you'd be fine. 
you might be fine. But what I've noticed is that anything that doesn't have a lot of contact with the bed, you want to reinforce it. So a trick I've developed is I add a pillar that goes up the side on a curved surface and it gives it a little bit of a uh, like a scaffolding something to hang on to while you're finishing you're, while you're building up more of a baseline and just kind of making sure that it's got something to anchor itself to for a second okay and across the, the front wouldn't hurt and these pop right off they cause no extra problems you're gonna have that little 0.24 gap, whatever gap you set up along there. And if you really wanna go crazy, you can add even more across the entire bottom and make sure your part does not come separated because nothing's worse when you get these tall parts that are shaking around the print bed, slinging around your, your big print surface, they will wiggle back and forth. So keep that in mind and use these pillars as a way to make sure your parts stick. So let's talk about bed sling. You can see my machine has this pointed right at the X. On the CR10, the fan is here on the right side and it blows across the part like that. And what I've discovered printing some large pieces was that the part side that was not facing away from the fan ended up having cracks on it. So what you would like to do is go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees away to so the business side is facing the fan and that's what gave me that sweet sweet finish okay on the inside you can see it's a little bit rougher and there's these little spots here that aren't perfect that's because of the cooling fan if you don't have one that goes all the way around well actually um, it doesn't get the same kind of cooling the front side does I turn my fan speed down to 60% and that's for a different video so let's take a look at this and we'll prepare to print and I'm printing that 0.3 layers, but that's for another video. This is just about support materials and orientation. If you guys have any suggestions for other videos or things that you're curious about, please let me know. Oh, and we can see, you know, support material looks pretty thin here. So we're like, hey, what's going on with that? We're at 7 hours, 11 minutes, which is about right, and 167 grams. Okay, so let's back out. And some things we can do to make that support actually work is we're going to increase extra inflation distance. It's just going to take whatever settings you already have and just push them out one millimeter. And we're also going to increase the density of the support material to 20. As you can see, I have infill angles set to 45 and negative 45, which creates a 90 degree cross pattern. And that's important for the way I do supports because let me show you. When my supports come out, they're solid. They're 100%, almost, they're, they're an X pattern, and it's solid. You want, I do that personally because I don't want it to break away under any circumstances until if I'm ready to take it off. So if you do it the other way where it's just 15% and it comes off really flimsy, it might not even support it. So that's up to you. It's individual preferences. Figure out how you'd like to do your support material. Let's take a look at this. And we're at 189 grams and 76 or seven hours, almost eight hours. And that's gonna be wildly different depending on how good your software is. I, you could spend much more time with the support materials and getting it just right. I think this is gonna work out fine. Let me slide this down. So I have a lower separation layers is one. So it, there's gonna be a gap and then it's gonna start the lower separation level layers. If your parts are sticking too hard to it, just that little lip right there, that then you can um, adjust the lower separation levels, but one should be good, okay? Let's look at the inside there. You can see as it rises, it pushes itself out, and it connects on the corner, and then it meets up at the very top, all the way done. Now it's gonna have a nice inside support wall system, and you can see here, that there's not a lot of sagging on the inside. So let's go back and look at that one that I actually built. Open factory file, don't worry about this, and face plates. File management is very important. So this was my final pro uh, product. I might have edited it, let me back out. This is how it's supposed to look. For some reason it didn't show that, but here we go. This is my final product, and this is the exact code I used to print this file. 
If you're interested in that, I will include a dr uh, Google Drive link uh, for this specific G-code on a CR10 with a 0.5 nozzle. Feel free to print with it if you like and see if it works for you. But this is for a Mark 42 faceplate for a 3D uh, for a CR10. So you can see I did what I suggested, which is the little braces on the side, completely angled, a little bit overkill here, quite honestly. I wish I hadn't done so much. Uh, the angled supports turned out great. On top, you can see where I supported it. And that is how I orient and print, a, at least this part, and I can go into more details if you guys like on how to orient parts for 3D printing. All right, guys, that's all I got. If you have questions, please ask them in the comments below. Thank you and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Bye.